أعوذ بالله السميع العليم أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من العين الشيطان الغوي الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أفضل الأنبياء والمرسلين ورحمة الله للعالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد والصلاة والسلام على أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعسومين المذنومين الميامين المهديين ولعنة الله أدائم على عدائهم أجمعين من يومنا هذا إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقال الله تعالى في كتابه المجيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا قوامين بالقسط شهداء لله ولو على أنفسكم أو الوالدين أو الأقربين إن يكون غنيا أو فقيرا إن فالله أولى بهما فلا تتبعوا الحوى أن تعدلوا إن تلوا أو تعرضوا إن الله كان بما تعملون خبيرا أمن بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم Continuing with our subject from last night There's of the beautiful story of Asma bint Umais rahmatullahi ta'ala alayha and the story of her and her son and their sacrifices this is such an amazing story because there's so many lessons from the story about the meaning of wafa and wila and mahabba and what does it mean to have true loyalty true belief and the aqidah sahiha correct belief to have iltizam and emphasis upon your belief and your aqidah like what does that mean in your life you know people say oh have aqidah have belief but what does that look like in someone's life so we saw the example of asma bint umais last night and i and i as i mentioned to you that there it is no exaggeration whatsoever to say that Asma bint Umais has a maqam similar to that of Umm al -Bineen. Similar to that of Umm al -Bineen. Why? For many reasons. First and foremost because of her karaba and her closeness with Fatima to Zahra alayha. And because of all of the examples of her loyalty which was shown again and again and again during the life of the Prophet and the life of Amir al muminin salamu alayhi alayhi, in even, even, in even being the wasila for saving the life of Amir al muminin as we spoke about last night, and in, in, while she was married to Abu Bakr, she was married to Abu Bakr, and even during that time, she still was a loyal follower of Amir al muminin despite the fact that her husband was Abu Bakr. Can you think of how difficult that is? Sa'ab. Chitten Sa'ab. Chitten Sa'ab. Her husband was Abu Bakr. Yet she stood with Fatima to Zahra, salamu alayha, against her own husband. In that society, vidaka zaman, do you know how hard that is? What kind of loyalty and courage and shuja'a and courage it takes to stand against not only your husband, but the Khalifa of Muslimin? Yes, she did so sirran. It was in secret mostly. But if he found out, could you imagine? These were the people of Ahlul Wila wal Wafa. We can't compare ourselves to them. And then later on, after the death of Abu Bakr, she marries Amir al-Mu'mineen. She is an example, and her son, Muhammad bin Abi Bakr, 
are an example of the verse that I just quoted where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kunu qawamina bil qist. That be people who stand for justice, witnessing before Allah. Even if it be lu'ala waladain, o al akrabin, even if it be over your own parents, we're going to see tonight how this unfolds and tomorrow night. Because if we want to be in the camp of Sahib al Asri wa Zaman, then these are the imtihanat and the tests that we have no choice but to pass. When we say, Allahumma ajjalli waliyak al faraj, when we recite this dua, what kind of wafa and loyalty is required from us? That we cannot understand Karabala until we understand those who pave the way in two ways. Awalan, those who pave the way with zulm, al mumahidin, li tamkini min qitaliku. Those who paved the way for the killing of Abu Abdullah. Wathaniyan, and on the other side, we look at what? Those who paved the way of the Sabil of Shuja and Wafa and Wila. Those who paved the way and set the standard for both the Nisa and the Rijal, for the women and the men, for what it means to stand with Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Birsir or Alan, either in secret or in open. Khafiyatan or Jahara, with silence and quietness or out loudly. But they were the example of what? We read in the letter of Sahib al Asri wa Zaman. This is an example of what we have to have. These are the attributes that are shared between Ashab al Mahdi wa Ashab al Aimma who came before. Al Ma'deen. The companions of the Imams who came before and the companions of, of the of, of the of this of of the Hujja have certain attributes that are mushtarak. There's they come together. In the letter of the Imam of the time, which he has written to Al Amari wa Abihi to 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 Uthman bin Sa'id, wa Muhammad bin Uthman, to both of the two representatives, father and son of the twelfth Imam. What does he say in this letter? It is narrated by Sa'ad ibn Abdullah al Ashari al Kummi, one of the great ruwat of Hadith of Qum, who we accept as Hadith. Sa'ad bin Abdullah narrates the Tawqi and the letter of Sahib al Zaman. In this letter, the Imam says, So that they shall know, or he shall know, our followers shall know that the truth is with us. Wafina, and it is within us. And do not say, and he cannot say, that this belongs to anyone except for us. The haq belongs to no one illa Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. No one else. Wadih? We cannot have the idea that haq belongs to anyone but Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. So the question that I would put forward to mu'mineen and mu'minat. I don't know where you can find in the sunnah of Ahlul Bayt the idea that truth is multiple. There's multiple truths. No. They said the truth is with Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. And no one can claim that it is with anyone other than them. Illa kadabun muftar. Except that this person is a fabricating liar. Wala yadda'ihi ghayruna illa dalun ghawi. And anyone who claims this is a misguided rebellious one. فَلَا يَقْتَصِرُوا مِنَّا عَلَى هَذِهِ الْجُمْلَةِ دُونَ الْتَفْسِيرِ Then the Imam says something, سَلَامُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ صَاحِبُ الْعَصْرِ وَالزَّمَانِ He says, and you must be content 
This person must be content. Yaqtasiru. They must limit themselves to what we have told them bidun tafsir. Meaning sometimes the imam will tell us something, we are meant to be quiet and accept and follow. Bidun tafsir. The Imam, Salamullahi alayhi, Sahib al-Asri wa Zaman, does not owe us a tafsir in the same way Amir al-Mu'mineen did not owe Asma bint Umais a tafsir. Asma bint Umais, Rahmatullahi ta'ala alayha, she did not ask Ahlul Bayt for bayina, for some explanation, dalil, because she knew they were appointed by Allah. al Imam min Allahi ta'ala. If we believe the imam is from Allah, then we accept that this is the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. Sahib Zaman, may Allah hasten his reappearance, is telling us that this must be the hal of my Shia. This must be the situation and the feeling of my Shia. Then he says, وَيَقْنَعُ مِنْ ذَلِكَ بِالْتَعْرِيضِ دُونَ دُونَ التصريح. دُونَ التصريح. And he must be content with this ta'rid, just an indication. We're not giving a complete discussion, but he must be or she must be content with what we have told him. Duna tasrih. Even if we don't give a complete explication and elucidation and clarification, what we have said is kafi. The Shia accept what the Imams tell them. And this is an example of what we see in the Shuhada of Karbala, in the Ashab of Sahib al Asri wa Zaman, and in the loyal followers of Amir al Mu'mineen, such as Asma bint Umais and Muhammad bin Abi Bakr. Rahmatullah ta'ala alayhima. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Now let's get to the story part. After the death of Umar, Uthman was appointed through Ashura. We spoke about that last night, right? Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas was the one who supported Uthman's candidacy, among others. However, the problem with, with Uthman was that he was entirely incompetent. From the very beginning of the Khilafah, there was problems with Uthman ibn Affan, the third Khalifa, because he was appointing his own people, his own akriba, and people from his own close relations. This is called in English, nepotism. Muawiyah, who was already given a position in Sham, under Umar, now was given the complete jurisdiction. Right, he began in the city of Jerusalem, and then expanded his rule throughout Sham under the Khilafah of Uthman. So Omar began this sunnah of, or this practice of having the Umawis in Sham. Uthman, obviously being his relative, continued this practice. Where am I going with this? We knew that people like Muawiyah entered the religion as rebels, him and his father, Nevertheless, Muawiyah's fame came up as through his experience as a military leader. And we know Bayt Abu Sufyan always had hatred for Ali wa ala Ali. But Uthman already developed a reputation of being a very one-sided person when it came to the Umayyads. What's the point that I'm getting at here? This was known as the first widespread fitna in Islam. Fitna al-Ula. This is what began the first civil war among the Muslims. Because there were many, many, many Muslims that felt that Uthman was fasiq wal fajir. Many. This is nothing. This is nothing. As I teach this in the university, this is the history. This is how it is taught. This is historical facts. Many Muslims considered Uthman to be a fajr, a fasiq, because of the actions that he was perpetrating, in terms of him being a wasila for the spread of fisk, because his governors in Basra, his governors in Egypt, his governors in Sham, 
all of them were committing acts of corruption. Uthman was told, Miraran wa kirara. Again and again, remove these people from power. Remove these people from people like Abdullah bin Amr and others. Remove them from power. Half of them are drunkards. They're stealing money. What? It was ma'aruf to the people. Problem after problem after problem after problem. Blood would boil. Tempers would rise. And you had a group of people from Egypt and Kufa, from Qahira and Kufa, that now rose up against Uthman. They warned him many times. If you do not do anything to stop this, you will be stopped yourself. Push came to shove. And do you want to know who were some of the people here? I doubt many of you know this history. Kumail ibn Ziyad, Malik al-Ashtar, wa Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr. Some of the top lieutenants of Amir al-Mu'mineen, the people who had become his top lieutenants, the people who would hold the secrets of his heart were among the first to stand against Uthman. Shuf al wafa. Awana lil adala. Walil imam. Because the justice and the imam come together. Kumail ibn Ziyad, Malik al Ashtar, and Muhammad bin Abi Bakr, the son of Abu Bakr. Muhammad, the son of Abu Bakr, were some of the first to stand up against Uthman. The situation got so tense that they stormed the house of Uthman in Medina. Yeah. Kumail bin Ziyad, according to some traditions, was there. Muhammad bin Abi Bakr was there. Muhammad storms. Now listen to this. Muhammad, the son of Abu Bakr, storms the house of the third Khalifa, Uthman ibn Affan. Look how ripe. And look at this poetic justice of history. If you explain this to another Muslim, I don't know if they would even believe you. This is historical facts. Muhammad storms the house of Uthman, the son, the first, the son of Abu Bakr, who then was raised in the lap of Amir al-Mu'mineen as a child. He essentially became the son. Tomorrow we'll talk about the relationship between Amir al-Mu'mineen and Muhammad. Muhammad storms the house of Uthman. And the riwayah states, Inna Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr akhada bi lahiyatihi fahazaha. He grabs the beard of Uthman. Let me rewind this again. Muhammad, the son of Abu Bakr, storms the house of Uthman ibn Affan, grabs his beard, fahazaha, and he shakes it like a tail. Uthman begins to cry. We don't want to say like a baby. But he begins to cry. Muhammad, minu Uthman. Uthman was way older than Muhammad. Anyways, that is something else to think about here. Uthman bin Affan is scared out of his life. Muhammad does not do anything other than this and he leaves. According to 99% of the narrations, this was it. So to accuse the Shia of Amir al-Mu'mineen as being the killers of Uthman, there's no direct historical evidence. They were present there, but they did not participate because after they left, Uthman was stabbed to death. He was stabbed and according to Sunni tradition, his blood let out onto the Quran and that's a sign that he's a great man. I don't know how, anyways. That it's apparently an ayah that he died a great, you know, pious death. Muhammad bin Abi Bakr. Oh, wait a second. The brother of Aisha. The brother of Aisha. The son of Abu Bakr. Grabbed Uthman by his beard and put him up against the wall. And according to some traditions, he took care of him in other ways as well there. Let's not get into the further things of, of, of what happened in the house of Uthman. He turns to Uthman and he tells him, Ma akhna anka Muawiyah. Muawiyah is of no use to you today, Uthman. Wa ma akhna anka ibn Abi Sarah. Ibn Abi Sarah was who? This guy was, was a complete psychopath. He became the governor of Egypt. Some traditions from Tabari's history even say that he claimed to be a prophet at one point. I mean, these were the wackos, honestly, the crazy wackos that Uthman was appointing. Muhammad turns to him and says, where's your Muawiyah now? Ma'akhna anka Muawiyah, 
Ibn Abi Sara, Muawiyah, all your friends, your gang, the people that you think are your supporters. Today it's me, Muhammad, and you, Uthman. Look at the courage. The shujaat. Look at the courage. Mu'mineen, Shia'atu Ali, Shia'atu Sahib zaman Would you and I have this kind of courage? Uthman kana khalifat al muslimin Muhammad was young. What courage did it take for him to stand against the leader of the Muslims? Of course, he was raised in the lap of Asma bint Umais and Amir al Mu'minin. These people are brothers. They are not like me and you. When it comes to the rights of Allah, Bismillah wa billah wa tawakkul ala Allah wa fi sabilillah. Muhammad now turns to Uthman and says, Today your father would not be happy with you, O Muhammad. This was a sensitive point. Remember, Muhammad's father was Abu Bakr. Although he was raised in the lap of Amir al muminin his biological father was who? Abu Bakr. Was the first Khalifa. But apparently they're all Khulafar Rashidun anyhow. But the son of Abu Bakr definitely didn't believe that. So I don't know how all this can be reconciled anyhow. So this is the history of Islam as it is. But I'm showing you the point of this. I'm showing you look at the iltizam of Muhammad bin Abi Bakr. Look at his determination. Despite the fact that his own father was of this company, despite the fact that after the death of Uthman, what would happen, my dear brothers and sisters? You, we cannot understand Karbala without this. You know this, right? Karbala cannot be understood without what I'm about to explain. Aisha joins with Talha and Zubair with the backing of Muawiyah to fight Amir al muminin in Basra, the Battle of Jamal. We'll talk a little bit more about this betrayal later. Aisha is the brother of Muhammad bin Abi Bakr. Muhammad is fighting on the side of Ali. And Aisha is one of the leaders of the army against her own brother. Can you imagine? Aisha is on the battlefield with armor. We'll get to that in a second. After the battle, Amir al muminin turns. The riwayah says, Amara ala Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr an yanzila Aisha fanzalaha dar Abdullah ibn Khalaf al khuzai After the battle, there was a discussion as to what to do with Aisha. She's still Zoja to Nabi. But she's now lost the war. Muhammad was now became her jailer. Look at this. I don't know if you understand the irony of all this. Muhammad, the son of Abu Bakr, becomes the jailer of Aisha, the daughter of Abu Bakr. This is, I don't think this could be more poetic in how this history unfolds. So she takes her, he takes his sister, puts her basically into custody. He's told by Amir al-Mu'mineen to make sure that she doesn't have any injuries. Look at very carefully at the riwayah. فَقَالَ عَلِي رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْ لِمُحَمَّدِ This is not from Shia, this is from all the books, the history of Islam. Tabari, Ansabul Ashraf, uh, all the Waqatu Sifin, all the early books of Islamic history. Amir al-Mu'mineen turns to Muhammad and says, أُنْظُرْ هَلْ وَصَلَ إِلَى أُخْتِكْ شَيْءِ Look at the wisdom, the hikmah of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Yani, kayfa kana yata'amul ma'al nas? Hatta ma'al adu? He said to Muhammad, check your sister to make sure she is not injured. She led a war against him. She was the cause of how many hundreds, if not thousands of Muslims were killed. Yet Amir al-Mu'mineen tells Muhammad, to check her wounds. Muhammad checks and he says, basically, I don't need to go through the Arabic, basically she had a hadid iron plates on her, means that she went for war. She was, she was loaded up for war. She got cut on the arm a little bit. She was okay though. 
But the point is, look at the hikmah and the wisdom of Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi Look at, despite the fact that he could have, I mean, taken her as prisoner. I mean, there was a discussion about this, as you know. I don't want to digress too much, but there was a discussion about this after the end of the Battle of Jamal, Harb al-Jamal, which is what to do with Aisha. Because technically, it all becomes ghanima. But of course, she's wife of the Prophet, there was a ihtiram for that, and she was sent on her way back to Medina. Yet when Imr al-Mu'mineen dies, she does such a shukr. That's a different story in the books of history. She forgets how he treated her on that day. But this is the lesson. Our aimma, we're not out to hurt anybody. We're not out to shame anybody. Look at how they treated Abu Abdullah was Ashab Abu Abdullah. And look at how Amir al-Mu'mineen treated them at Jamal. Can we even compare the seerah of Ahlul Bayt with seerah to Akhirin and the, the practices of other people? Muhammad bin Abi Bakr would continue in this line, in this path of struggle and ijtihad fi sabilillah. Before he became governor or sometime while he was governor of Egypt, right? Before Malik al-Ashtar, Amir al-Mu'mineen appointed Muhammad to be the governor of Misr, of Egypt. While he was the governor of Egypt, كَتَبَ رِسَالَةً إِلَى Muawiya ibn Abi Sufyan. He wrote a letter to Muawiyah. Now wow, what is in this letter is explosive. Tonight we'll cover the introduction, tomorrow we'll cover the rest of this letter because this is something that we need to know. Muhammad the son of Abu Bakr writes the letter, بِسْمِ rahman rahim min Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr إِلَى الْغَاوِي ibn Sakhrin. Muhammad says to the misguided one, Dalal, son of Sakhar, peace be upon those who obey God. Salamun ala ahli ta'atillah, mimman huwa muslimun li ahli wilayatillah amma ba'd. Basically, just beginning, salam upon those who are on the authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, Allah created us as servants and so on and so forth. Minhum shaqiyun wa sa'id. Then he says, Aslama wa salama akhuhu wa ibn ammi. He now begins by describing the attributes of a middle mu'mineen. This is the son of Abu Bakr describing the sifat, the attributes of who? Imam Ali, middle mu'mineen. He says, Salama wa aslama akhuhu wa ibn ammi, Ali ibn Abi Talib, fa sadaquhu bil ghayb. Al maktoom wa afaru ala kullu hameem. That he put himself in every fire, he would rather his skin boil rather than that of the Prophet. And he consoled himself during every fear. And whatever war the Prophet was at war with, Ali was at war with. This is the words of Muhammad to Muawiyah about the fadail of Amir al Mu'minin. That there is no one like him when it comes to fighting in the way of Allah. Wala muqarab lahu fi fi'li. And there is no one who can come close to Ali when it comes to his actions. Awwalu nas islaman wa asdaqu nas niyatan. He was the first of, of, the, of the people in Islam. And no one can have a more truthful niyyah than Amir al-Mu'mineen. Asdaqu nas niyyatan. This is very interesting that Muhammad the son of Abu Bakr is saying this. And he goes on to say that the secrets of the Prophet were the secrets of Ali. Wa yushrikuhu fi amri. Wa anta aduhu wa ibn adu. And you are the enemy of the Prophet, the son of his enemy. Or the enemy of Ali and the son of his enemy. So what were some of the secrets that were shared between Ali and the Prophet? Salamullah alayhi, Amir al-Mu'mineen. One of those examples we see 
is on the night of Mi'raj, when Amir al-Mu'mineen goes for the night journey. The riwayah states that as the Prophet went higher and higher in the night journey, وَفَتَحَ لَهُ أَبْوَابُ السَّمَاءِ And the abwab of the sama were opened. Tusi narrates this in, in his amali. Sheikh al-Ta'ifa narrates this in his amali. وَالْحُجُبْ حَتَى نَذَرَ إِلَيْهِ وَنَذَرْتُ إِلَيْهِ And the Prophet says that I saw him. He saw me and I saw him. Who is this? ثُمَّ بَكَّ رَسُولِ And then Rasulullah began to cry during the Isra wal Mi'raj. قَدْ فَتَحْتُ it's as if he opened something and he says, Fatahta wa nadartu ila Ali. And I looked to Ali and Ali looked to me and their eyes met with one another during the Isra wal Ma'raj. And it was at that moment that Allah told me to tell Ali that he is my wasi wa khalifati. This were some of the asrar and the secrets that were shared between the qalb of Amir al muminin and the qalb of Rasulullah. That nobody could compare to. And then he tells Muawiyah, Muhammad bin Abi Bakr, continuing with the letter, he says, أَلَمْ تَزَلْ أَنْتَ وَأَبُوكَ تَبْغِيَانِ الْغَوَاءِ لِدِينِ اللَّهِ that you and your father have never stopped fighting against the religion of Allah. وَتَجْحَدَانْ عَلَىٰ إِتْفَاءِ نُورِ اللَّهِ And you and your father Abu Sufyan have never stopped trying to put the light of Allah out. While Ali and the Prophet were always bringing the, the light of Allah up for the world. فَكَيْفَ يَا لَكَ الْوَيْلِ تَعْدِلُ نَفْسِكْ بِعَلِي And cursed are you, how can you dare to compare yourself to Ali ibn Abi Talib? Muhammad bin Abi Bakr, can you imagine this? Is telling Muawiyah, Wailun lak. Cursed are you. How dare you try to compare yourself to Amir al Mu'mineen? Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Ikhtasabta haqqa wa kumta bihad al amr duna. That you were usurped and stole his right. And you came into this position instead of him. Brothers and sisters, this is a lesson. That the akal and the intellect can only be sharpened through the love and obedience to the traditions of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Why? Because Muawiyah was also a very brilliant person. We will see tomorrow the jawab of Muawiyah to Muhammad bin Abi Bakr. What a response. And we will see tomorrow how Muawiyah can become the best mufassir for ziyarat Ashura. You must be wondering why. You'll have to wait till tomorrow for that. How can Muawiyah be the, one of the best people to explain ziyarat Ashura? If we look at the jawab and the response of Muawiyah to Muhammad, and then we look at ziyarat Ashura, we can find some very interesting things. But the point is that people get duped and they get fooled when their akal is not sharp. And it's not sharpened through their love and their obedience and their knowledge to the traditions of the Ahlul Bayt, to the Quran and the traditions of Ahlul Bayt. And one of those people who sacrificed themselves is Wahab bin Abdullah al Kalbi. What was it about the akhlaq of Imam al Hussein? The love of Imam al Hussein, the mercy of Imam al Hussein that attracted Wahab. He was just married, as the riwayat tell us, and his caravan intersected with the caravan of Abu Abdullah. And he saw the pure godly sincerity in the Imam. And some traditions tell us, and the more, more correct ones, is that he converted after meeting Imam al Hussein. He was a Christian, Bad Aslama. And he converted to Islam when he met Imam al Hussein. Then, after he became a Muslim and his family became Muslim, 
They joined the army of Imam al Hussein. And what a story it is. On the day of Ashura, the arrows are fired. Habib ibn Madahir and Buraid stand up for battle. The Imam signals for them to step down. One of the first to go out and fight on that day was Wahab, who went out to fight. He goes out to fight. He rushes into battle and he struck Yassar, Yassar, the slave of Ziyad. Who does he return to? To his mother and his wife. And he says, Ya Umma, amla? Are you happy with me or not, O oh mother? Look at this. This is a mother who will only be happy. What does she say? Faqalat al um. That I will not be happy until you're killed in front of Hussein. Oh, my dear mothers, tonight, my women, tonight, do you or I have this wafa from Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad? Are we going to be the first ones to sacrifice our children for the Mahdi? Are we going to be the first ones to have our sons go to fight to support the Imam's cause? But on the other hand, his loving wife turns to him and she missed him. She was just married. He was 18 years old. Think of this sacrifice, brothers. She says, do not bring distress upon me. She was telling him not to fight. His mother urges him to go back out into the battlefield. For the one who fights for the son of the daughter of Rasulullah shall receive the shafa'at of Zahra fi yawm al qiyamah. Shuf al wafa, shuf al wila. Look at their courage, look at their loyalty, my dear brothers and sisters. He fought 19 horsemen on that day. He did not stop fighting until they cut his head off. Subhanallah. Look at the resolve. Then his wife runs out into the battlefield. She grabs an amud. She grabs a rod. She turns to her husband. And she holds on to his thobe. Imam al Hussein notices the situation. He says, Your reward is from Allah. But the riwayah continues. Allah mazanjani in wasilu tu darain narrates. Wa Husayna. With his one hand cut off, he was taken to Omar ibn Sa'ad. Wahab ibn Habab. This is another narration about his death. He, that he had one hand cut off and he was taken to Umar ibn Sa'd. The young newly married boy was mocked by Umar ibn Sa'd. He tells Umar ibn Sa'd, is this the worst that you can do? Umar ibn Sa'd's men then were ordered to decapitate Wahab. And then they took the head of Raha of Wahab and they threw it into the, into the camp of Imam al Hussein. Wahab's mother takes the head of her son, Rahsu Wahab. She begins to kiss the head of her son. Ya Allah. She begins to blood the, wipe the blood from the face of her son. Imagine this mother. Let your heart grieve for Um Wahab tonight. She says, All praise is due to Allah. Alhamdulillah. That all praise is due to Allah who made my face white through your shahada and your martyrdom. Ya waladi bayna yaday Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Because of your martyrdom in front of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, that my pride and my joy is that my son was martyred and killed for Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Let the tears flow from your eyes, brothers, as she was wiping the blood from the face of her son. Alamat al Bajlisi narrates. The Shimr then sees her, Wab Abdullawa Imama. He then orders a boy named Rustum. Rustum takes a rod. He approaches this innocent woman. Now I will not describe to you what this man did to her. You can only imagine what he did with the rod to her. This was the first woman to be martyred in Karbala. Hussein then cries out. May Allah wajhaha. May 
elaborate light to her face. And may Allah gather her with Zahra on the day of judgment. Brothers, tonight we will also remember Habib ibn Madahir. What to say about Habib? The riwayah states that when Habib reached Karbala, he kissed the ground in front of Hussein. At this point, Zainab saw Habib. She told Hussein, send my salams to Habib. Habib hears the salam of Zainab. When he heard the salam of Zainab, he began to hit his face. And he threw dirt onto his head. He said, who am I to deserve the salam of Zainab bin Ali? Look at the humility of Shuhada of Karbala, of Ansar of Abdullah. Look at their humility, brothers. The riwayah stated, that the situation became very difficult. That this tent of Imam and Hussein had been cut open with a spear. The women were screaming. Habib was the commander of the left flank on the day of Ashura. He said, Ya Abu Abdullah. Ya Abu Abdullah, nafsi al fida. May I be sacrificed for you. That I see the enemies are getting close to you. And I only wish to meet my Lord. Allow me to fight. The Riwayah stated that the 60, that the old man Habib went out to fight. Eventually they gathered around him. He was hit upon his head. He's tried to get up. And he was hit on his head with a sword. And Tamim got down and cut off the head of Habib. They began fighting over the head of Habib ibn Madahir. Hasin bin Tamim out of his depravity. And his sickness took the head of Habib and he hung it around his horse and began dancing his horse around with the head of Habib swinging. Bukal al Hussein alayhi salam, bi al Sharif. With the scream of Hussein, he said, And Allah yahtasabu nafsi wa humata ashabi. That Hussein is crying out to Allah. That oh, my patience is with you. My complaint is with you, Ya Allah. But brothers, I want to relate a riwayah to you tonight. This riwayah will break your heart. It was in the city of Medina that the messenger of Allah saw Habib ibn Madahir. What did he see? The riwayah says, Ra'itu yarfa'u turab min tahti qadam al Hussein, qadam al Hussein. That I saw Habib wiping the dirt under the feet of Hussein. Rasulullah was asked, Limada you have Habib? Why do you love Habib? He says, Because I saw him wiping the turab under the feet of Hussein. Who will lift the dirt from the body of Hussein? Who will wipe the blood from the watch of Hussein? Assalamu ala kharib al gharaba Brothers, think about the ghurbat of Imam al-Hussein. 
according to some riwayat. His face was in the sand of Karbala. On that day, there was nobody to wipe the face, to lift the dirt from the body of Hussein. To wipe the body of Hussein, to do the ghusl of Hussein. Assalamu alal muhassil bidam jira. Wa abdullah. Allah laqrat Allah ya lakum zalimin. وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي مقلب ينقلبون مع تمن حسين